Good morning, everyone. Good morning, champions. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Super Monday Masterclass. I welcome you all to this amazing meeting today. And um, we thank God for the most beautiful, amazing weekend. And um, this morning, we're going to be um, examining something very, very um, unique, something very, very powerful. And um, we're going to be going through the powerful blueprints. Our powerful blueprint we used in 2021, the 2021 blueprint. And I'm going to be pulling out some very powerful lessons, you know, in the blueprint um, to help you build your business, right? So I'll be taking you through the 2021 blueprint and pulling out some very powerful points from that particular blueprint as delivered by our president, Ambassador Michael Okoli. So we're going to be looking at the blueprint for 2021. The title of that blueprint is Creating Millionaires, No Excuses. Creating Millionaires, No Excuses. That title was well picked because you see, the essence of our business is to build a team of people who become millionaires. And we told you that our, our, our um, mission is to create 50,000 monthly millionaires in Nigeria by 2024, no excuses right through the digital and connected economy. So that's what we want to do. And for us to do that, we need to understand um, the, the, the lessons from this blueprint that will help us so that we can move forward, you know, in getting ourselves to our destination. And um, there are some core lessons, two core lessons I want us to look at, first of all. And um, those two um, mindsets will help us to, to forge ahead and create the success that we're looking for in our business. Right now, the first mindset we need to understand is that it doesn't matter what happens to you, right? How you react to what happens to you um, defines your outcome. As simple as that. It doesn't matter what happens to you. Many of us have gone through challenges. Many of us are currently going through challenges. Many of us are facing difficulties, you know, in the business. Some of us are unable to, you know, make calls. Um, some of us, um, um are in places where you don't have La Buena Vida, you know, some of us don't have the phones to, to, to the kind of phones we need to, to join Zoom. You know, some of us speak to people and they don't join us. Some of us just have a lot of challenges around us, right? Remember, the same water that softens the yam hardens the egg. Right? The same water that softens the yam hardens the egg. I want us to look at this as a very, very, um, um, very powerful line to, to live by. You see, what you are going through right now is not unique to you. The problems you are facing right now is not unique to you. But what you do with that problem is what makes all the difference. Right? It's what makes all the difference. You see, when life throws lemons at you, what do you do with it? You use those lemons to make a lemonade. So you don't just sit down there and you're really whining, crying, that as if you're the one that has the worst luck on earth. No, you're not the one. You can actually take what is happening to you and create something very amazing and formidable with it, right? So the same water that substances the yam hardens the egg. The pressure you're going through right now, what do you want it to do to you, right? What do you want the pressure to do to you? So the outcome is how you define what happens to you that matters. So you can take what is happening to you right now and use it as fuel to transform your life. Or you can use it as an excuse to remain where you are. Right? The second um, um, mindset I want to have is very simple. The word impossible is only a mirage. It does not exist. The word impossible exists only in the minds of anybody that believes it. Right? Impossible can either be read as impossible or it can be called I'm possible. I am possible, right? So whichever line of interpretation you give it is actually correct for you. So you can you can you can see things and say, yes, things are difficult, things are not um, working well, or you can you can transform everything and see something amazing in everything you do. We need to understand that the world has changed. Everything is changing all around us. Businesses are closing up just because of technology. 
People are losing their jobs by the day. Companies are able to pay people. Companies are folding up. It might look very bleak for so many people, but guess what? In the midst of all this, we have this amazing set concept, this beautiful system called the La Buena Vida. The La Buena Vida is, 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 is the last hope of the common man. It's a ray of hope in a dwindling economy. In a slow economy like Nigeria, the La Buena Vida is here to transform lives. The La Buena Vida to the common man is a hope that gives him the capacity to play the game of money, that gives him the capacity to pay his rents, to pay his children's school fees, to feed his family, and ultimately to become a millionaire. We need to understand this clearly because the average person out there who wants to become a millionaire does not have a functional plan that is designed to make him a millionaire. The guy only has a plan to hustle, 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 hustle until the day he dies. He has no plan that is guaranteed to make him a millionaire if he does those activities consistently over a period of time. The La Buena Vida is here for you. Right? You see, if you decide to be a millionaire and remain a millionaire, the La Buena Vida is what you need. Right? That's why we've said that the, 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 um, the title of the of what we're discussing today is creating millionaires in the connected economy, no excuses. So I want to ask you a few questions. What does it take to be a millionaire? What does it take to be a millionaire? First, you need to become a millionaire. First, you need to become a millionaire um, you, because you cannot give what you don't have, right? The same number that quote not have it. You cannot give what you don't have. So for you to create millionaires, you also need to be a millionaire, right? And you need to be in the path towards becoming millionaires. But you see, I tell people that in our business, if you are behaving like a millionaire, if you have the mindset of a millionaire, you too can create millionaires, even if you're not a millionaire yet. If you have the mindset, as you advance towards becoming a millionaire, you can be pulling people along with you who will become millionaires with you. And I'm going to be giving you the five pillars to create millionaires. If you use these five pillars, this year is going to transform for you. Pillar number one, a heart of gold. Go to the chat room now, type down pillar number one, a heart of gold. Right? A heart of gold. Type it down, pillar number one, a heart of gold. A heart of gold. I'm giving you the five pillars for creating millionaires. Pillar number one, a heart of gold. Now, what is a heart of gold? What do we mean when we're talking about a heart of gold, right? Now, this is a prerequisite for creating millionaires. A heart of gold is a heart that is genuinely interested and deeply concerned about other people. It is a heart that yearns for the success of others. A heart of gold is a heart that puts people above business and not business above people. In our business, the only way you can move to the next level is if you put people above business. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. And if you want people to buy from you, to join you in this business and to build this business with you, they must know you, they must like you, and they must trust you. And that means you must possess a heart of gold. A heart of gold is a selfless heart, right? It's like the heart of a mother nursing her newborn. The mother's concern is invested solely on the newborn with all matters concerning self relegated to the background. So the woman doesn't think of herself. All she thinks about is the care and the well-being of the newborn. You must develop this kind of heart towards your teammates and prospects so that you enable your create your, 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 your you enable them become millionaires, right? Because this is very very important. Most people want to do this business, but you come towards your teammates with a lot of in, uh, uh, animosity. You're always angry at them. You're always quarreling with them, and you're not helping them in any way to move to the next level. You don't have the heart of gold. People who do not consciously develop this kind of heart will lose steam 
during the course of the year and as they do their business. This hat must be deliberately, deliberately developed to attract keep and keep people in the business. Now understand that creating millionaire is a daunting task. You will need a strong will, right? Very strong will, followed by a heart of gold. Now understand that research has shown that people are more likely to last in a long battle and overcome if, they are, if they, they, the reason they are fighting is for the betterment of other people who are less privileged than themselves. Imagine the war in Ukraine. The Ukrainians are facing an adversity from Russia, a much the second most powerful nation in the world, a much bigger army. Yet, yet, they have been winning battles after battles because they, have, they know what they are fighting for. They are fighting for the betterment of their people. They are fighting for the desire to be alive, to remain alive and not to be exterminated. So make no mistake, a heart of gold is a prerequisite for creating millionaires in this business. It cannot be skipped, and you must on purpose achieve this. Like I said, this business is a holy business. The only business in the world, the only business in the world that allows you to grow by helping others grow. And you can only achieve this if you have a heart of gold. So the question is, how do you develop a heart of gold? How? Number one, always exercise empathy. Exercise empathy. Continually see yourself in the position of others, in the position of your teammates, in the position of your prospects. Consider them the way you would consider your blood relatives. Your heart disposition will change. That's very important. So look at, look, listen to your people, work with them, be empathic, help them where possible, right? But always have the capacity to know the difference between excuses they make, right? When they make excuses, and something which is a real challenge for them. You must know how to identify that. When you identify something that's really a challenge for them, help them in every way possible. Number two, practice the art of listening. Make up your mind to listen more this year over talking. Listen to what your teammates are saying. People want to be heard and understood. Remember that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Never forget that. It is not always about you. The world does not revolve around you. It includes, it includes other people as well. So you need to have that in your mind, right? So listen to people. Listen to what people are saying. That's why you have two ears and one mouth. Use it to that ratio. Listen more than you talk. If you listen to your people, you will know where they are having challenges from. You will know where they are having problems. And you will know how to help them in ways that will really help them, right? Remember when Jesus crossed over to the other side of the Jordan, according to the Bible, Jesus crossed to the other side of the Jordan, and when he crossed there, a large crowd of people were gathered there waiting for him. Jesus must have listened to them because he turned to his apostles and he told them, feed these people, give them something to eat. He didn't sit down and begin preaching to them. No, they needed food. It's only a hungry man that can listen to the word of God. And he heard their yearnings and he told the apostles, give them food. So too, when you listen to your people, you will know when your people need food and you will know when your people need motivation. The worst mistake you can be making is motivating a hungry man, right? Also, the number three thing you must do to develop a heart of gold is without season, recite the affirmations that will come at the end of this program I will, I will tell you today, right? We have what we call our affirmation of champions. And you want to recite those affirmations, right? That you have a heart of gold and you care about people. When you repeatedly say things to yourself, you begin to morph into your affirmations and you begin and they begin to become a reality for you. That's one of the powerful things about affirmations. When you say affirmation, when you make affirmations, you proclaim things to yourself, you are reprogramming your conscious, your, your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind is infinitely powerful and it will help you move towards your goal. Right? So, what does it take to create a millionaire? Number one pillar to create millionaires is a heart of gold. Right? So that brings us to the second pillar of creating millionaires. And this one is very, very powerful. Pillar number two, industrializing the connected economy. Write it down. This is what we use to transform our team. Pillar number two, industrializing the connected economy. Write it down. And I want to discuss this. Now, many of you are familiar with the connected economy. The connected economy is the economy where we are today, 
where we're able to create um, um, services, right? Without being there and through connections, right? Network marketing is a business that operates in a connected economy. But for you to build massively and create the success you are looking for, you have to learn how to industrialize the connected economy. And this is what has set the La Buena Vida apart from other network marketing companies and groups around the world, right? We witnessed the, the gradual winding down of the industrial economy. It is happening. Now, even though it may seem, it may never, may not be eliminated totally, the time has come for a new economy to take over. And that new economy is a connected economy. And you can see that things are changing drastically, right, through the connected economy. You see that you no longer have um, places where you go buy video cassettes to go play, right? You no longer buy DVDs to go play. Those, those businesses are no longer in existence anymore. Today, people are getting their videos on YouTube, getting their videos on Netflix. It's as simple as that, right? That is a connected economy coming into play. The connected economy is transforming everything. But you need to understand that one of the fastest ways to build in the connected economy is by industrializing it. Now, in as much as the industrial economy slows, slows down, right? And slowly slips out of fashion, the structure, tenets, and principles that anchor the industrial economy may not quickly disappear. So you want to bring those structures into the connected economy, right? So what we need to do is this, as we enter this decade, right, and run through it, a lot of people will rush into the connected economy. Even though it is bread, it's, it's, it's a breakthrough, the people that will thrive in the new economy are those who will bring to position the tenets, the disciplines, the principles and operations of the industrial economy. So if you want to win in the connected economy, you want to be one of those people who are going to bring in the principles of the, connected, of the industrial economy into the connected economy, right? And everything will transform for you. Now, there are principles of the industrial economy I want us to examine. And the first principle we need to understand about the industrial economy is structure and organization. Structure and organization. One of the exciting attributes of the industrial economy is its entrepreneurial streak. Right? In the industrial economy, one, somebody works at their own pace and their own time. Now, with this, though, working at your own pace and time comes with a drawback of not being structured and organized. It's as simple as that. Because when people work for themselves, there's no structure most, most of the time. At the dawn of the connected economy, you may, have for, you, you, you may have been forgiven for not operating with structure. In this decade, you cannot succeed without a structure. When the connected economy started, people will just go out there connecting people, doing whatever they're doing, no structure, and you are hoping that somewhere along the line, somebody will take your business serious, take the business serious and run with it. But today, mm -mm, that doesn't work anymore. Today, you must put structures on ground if you mean to grow. If not, you will be one of those working in the, in the connected economy and trampled upon by those who have structures. When I say structure, I mean organization and planning in our engagement protocols. I mean repercussions when you go against the model structure. That's what we talk about. Now, let's take a look at um, the bank, right? Um, the, or a telecommunication firm, right? Or even a private supermarket as a case study here. The modus operandi, the modus operandi follows a strict model. You cannot just show up to a bank to work and close at your own discretion, right? Or you sell, or you begin to sell products or whatever you need to do, um, how, when, whenever you're in the mood. You don't just show up and behave anyhow and expect everything to go well for you. If in a traditional business model, some of us run businesses in the connected economy, as in if, if you're in a traditional business model, right, and you, and you run um, your, your, your business, how you run the connected economy, guess what? You might not go last one week. In fact, you will not last one week. Right? So you want to run your, 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 industri your connected economy business how you run your industrial economy business. And this is something we, we need to understand. 
right? Because that is the only way you can build a very functional and effective business. Now, companies use penalties, right? They use penalties to, to, to um, demand compliance in, in organizations. So when people default in organization, they are penalized, right? But in the connected economy, because you are not penalized, guess what? Anybody can come in, do whatever they want to do, right? And that's why a lot of people don't create success in our business. You find out why many people here don't create success. It's not because you don't know what to do. It's not because you don't know how to run the business, right? But the core reason why most people don't create success is basically because there is no discipline. There is no discipline, right? There's no structure on ground. So bringing it home, due to the massive influx of people into the connected economy, which is our business, the people that we try are those that stick strictly to a daily routine as though working for an organization. The drivers shall be those who adopt the disciplines of the industrial economy, mindsets inclusive. They do not do the business because they like to, but because there are repercussions if they do not do the business. They will be the, they will be the fortune makers of the connected economy of this decade. So when you sign up into this business, and you say, I don't like the business, I don't like it, I don't like the business. And you say you don't like the business, and because of that, you don't do the business. Right? That's where you're missing it. It is because you are coming into this with the connected economy mindset. <clears throat> Thinking is something you can come and do and not do, or choose not to do. No. If you are employed and paid $500,000 a month to do this business, what time will you get to the office? Will you get to the office by 10 o'clock? Will you close by 2 o'clock? Will you not do the activities? If your boss pays you $500,000 to do this business, Will you or will you not do the business? Right? Because that's the money you take home to feed your family. Will you tell your wife, hey, that is um, connected economy. They are into M global. I don't like what they are doing there. And uh, because of that, I will not do the 500000 naira job. You will not even finish the statement. You see yourself in the hospital. You need to understand this. That people who are going to thrive in this business are those who adopt the disciplines of the connected of the industrial economy. Those who do this business as if they are working in a bank. Those who do this business and say, you know what, I'm going to create success in this business no matter what. They will be the fortune makers of the connected economy in this decade. The principles of success, ladies and gentlemen, will never change. It will never change. I keep saying it. Success will never lower its standard to accommodate you. I emphasize this again. Success will never lower its standard to, to accommodate you. You must raise your standard to attain success. Drawing examples from the bank, only people who adopt the discipline, who are regimented, right? Who, are, who go through our presence and penalty models of the industrial economy in this business will make a fortune in the connected economy. The other day I talked about the regimented, um, regimenting the, the, your MLM network. You must regiment it. That's why we have what we call our daily method of operation. We even have the daily method of operation for part-timers. If you don't regiment it, you cannot build. If you don't include penalties, you cannot succeed. It's as simple as that. So if you want to win in the business, in the connected economy, you must make sure that you are ready to regiment your business. This is the reason why we have offices all around the country, because it allows us to sit down and regiment our business. That's why when somebody joins us, we say, do you want to do this business part-time or full-time? This is what part-time means, four hours a day, one hour sell meeting, one hour prospecting, one hour follow-up, one hour um, booking of prospects. This is what full-time means, eight hours a day. And we give you the regimented workflow for full-timers. Because you're in business. The alternative is to be a spare-timer. And spare-timers are people who amount to nothing much. Because a spare-timer does this business only when he's in the mood. So when you do the business only when you're in the mood, the business will pay you only when the business is in the mood. 
So only those who, is, who, who imbibe the industrial economy disciplines will make a fortune in the connected economy. Now let's look at the case in point, right? Now a supposed full-timer invites a, listen to this um, case point. A supposed full-timer invites eight people for an online briefing. He does not place reminder calls. He forgets to send the reminder text message to about three of them. He is not even set to make attendance five minutes to the event, to the event time. He does not deem it fit to log into the meeting to find out whether the prospects attended. He does not even call them after the meeting to follow up on them. Can you imagine such a thing? Right? And let's say he even calls the following day. He probably calls only one or two of the eight he invited, and that is it. Guess what? Nothing happens. His upline sees him the next day, and they smile and banter as though there was nothing at stake. After doing all this nonsense, he meets the upline. The upline will see him, smile with him, laugh with him, chat with him, they go have a drink, and then they continue in the cycle of doing nothing. Nothing happens. This is the scenario you find so many people in our business. You will invite people, or not invite rather, you will not even attend the cell meeting, sorry, the, the, the presentation. You don't even know whether the people you invited attend the presentation. You wear it online to see whether they came. You invited them for physical meeting and you were at home. You invited them for big announcement and you did not show up. And after all this, your upline sees you and shakes your hand. Right? Congratulating mediocrity. Now, let's look at the other scenario. If this same person were to be working in a bank in the industrial economy and handles his client's responsibilities in the same manner, what do you think will happen? He will get a verbal rebuke, followed by a query or a sack letter, right? And, and he is kicked out. The same attitude, different rest consequence. This same person misbehaved in the industrial economy and he was sacked, he was trashed down in trash immediately. But in the connected economy, he was he did the same thing and he, he went for a drink, which is offline, right? Because there are no consequences. You need to wake up, gentlemen and ladies. And you need to understand that for you to build your business, because this thing is called a business, like any other business in the world, don't play with it. For you to build your business, you must infuse consequences into your business. Your downlines don't have unlimited access to you. Type it there now in the chat room. Say this in the chat room. My downlines don't have unlimited access to me. My downlines don't have unlimited access to me. When you industrialize the connected economy, your downlines don't have unlimited access to you. I will explain why I said that. Because some of you are seeing it now, you're not wondering, ah, why are you saying that? Why are you saying that? It's not good. Your downlines don't have unlimited access to you. Downlines who are not ready to conform with the tenets of the industrial economy don't have unlimited access to you. Only downlines who are conforming with the, with the tenets of industrializing the connected economy have access to you. Because not everybody is going to join in building your business with you. After all, there's something we call the 80 20 law. 80% of people will contribute to only 20% of your income. And 20% of people will contribute to 80% of your income. So spend 80% of your time with 20% of people who give you 80% of your income. And 20% of time with 80% of your people who give you 20% of your income. Your downlines don't have unlimited access to you. And because you want them to, you, they think they have unlimited access to you, that is the reason why you are talking to them, they are not responding. That's the reason why you call them, come for the IPO, they don't show up. Come attend your quick start guide, they don't show up. Come let's invite, they don't show up. Pick the phone and call them and tell them, you only have 10 more days with me. You only have 30 more days with me, 20 more days with me. Count down from 45 days down and they will sit up. Because they know that they don't have unlimited access to you. You have other people you want to work with. 
So you have the SMO checklist, which you're supposed to discuss and finish with them in 30 days. And you have given them 45 days maximum to get it done. And if they are not showing up, you want to let them know that they don't have unlimited access to you. This is one of the ways you can, you can, you can put, um, um, you can industrialize the economy, economy by infusing penalties and, 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 and um, consequences when people are not doing what needs to be done. That's one of the ways you can do it. They don't have access to you in an unlimited fashion. If you have an office, they don't have access to your office on, in an unlimited way. People who are not taking their business serious, serious should not be people who you are giving that kind of attention to. Because if there are no consequences, nothing is going to go well, right? So there are different ways, three types of connectors, right? The first type of connectors are the full-timers, then we'll have the part-timers, and we'll have the spare-timers. The spectators are those who do the business whenever they feel like at their spare time, right? And this bridge can only get what we call supplemental income, right? Which can be good, by the way, but they should not dream about making anything big, making big fortune, because you cannot create massive fortune in your spare time. You look at how it works. You, you have a job that pays you 100,000 naira. You give that, or let's say 200,000 naira. You give that job that pays you 200,000 naira from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the evening, right? 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., about eight hours or half, I don't know how long that is, right? That's why you give that job that pays you 200K monthly. Then you come into our business and you want to earn 1 million naira monthly and you do the business when you're in the mood. What do you expect the business to pay you, right? So there's a limit to what you can, you can earn when you are when you are you do the business when you are in the mood. Now the thing about spare time is it is not necessarily that you you work you know you it's because you work no. There are people who don't work who don't have anything to do it. Yes, they are spare timers. They prefer spending more time on Netflix or just with their friends than talking about our business. So they are spare timers, right? Then we have the full timer, the, the part timers. The part timers are people that commit a substantial part of their time building this business outside their already allotted time for their paid employment or other engagements. The part-timers treat the business as a side hustle, like a second job or a third job or something like that, but it's regimented and connect and committed to it. This class of connectors can make significant income in this business. They can even hit six figures monthly. Some fierce part-timer can hit seven figures monthly, over a million naira, right? Depending on the quality and the time, allotted to the business. Still, part-timers can't make a fortune in this business because you cannot do part-time because nothing you do part-time can make you a fortune. It's as simple as that. So if you're a part-timer, you want to create massive fortune for yourself. You can't not create that through this system because you're already giving more time to less rewarding ventures. And that's the truth. When you give more time to less rewarding ventures, the more rewarding venture will not be happy with you. Right? So you need to understand what we're talking about and you need to push hard. As a part-timer, as a part-timer, your connected economy business must be structured, even if you're just putting two hours a day, just like you have a second job. So it must be structured. It must be regimented with accountability partners Otherwise, you become a spare timer. Let me take that for you again, because many of you are part timers and you need to understand what it looks like. As a part timer, your connected economy business must be structured, even if you are just putting two hours a day, just because, just as if you have a second job. So you must regiment it. It must be structured, right? It will be regimented with accountability partners. Otherwise, you are functioning as a spare timer. And in our team, we tell you that as a part-timer, you have to do your best to put in four hours in a day. How do you get the four hours? One hour for cell meeting in the morning. Very important. You can actually have an earpiece in your ear and do your job in the office, 8 to 9 a.m., and then you hear the cell meeting, right? And then, after your work, put in three hours. After your job, put in three hours. If you have a supermarket you built, right? You, you have a supermarket you, you've invested 20, 30 million in. 
And that supermarket is somewhere um, close to your home. When you close from work, you will go to your supermarket and you're going to spend at least three, four hours there before you go home. You will not just leave your supermarket to the, to the wheels and caprices of the boys working there. If not, you come back, you come there, you see you, have, you, you won't have any business anymore. So you have to be there to see your business grow. Same thing with our business. When you close and go home, go into your closet, right? Get into your closet, your, your study, or that angle in your room where you have a table, and sit down there and run your business for three hours. If you're a part-timer and you don't have a table from where you work from, you are not serious in the business. I tell you, you are not serious in the business. If you have a house where you sleep, it means you have a space to put a table. If you have a house where you sleep, it means you have a space to put a table. Put a table there, put a chair there and sit down. Even if it means raising your bed up and putting the table there, do it. Even if it means when you wake up in the morning, you carry a table and you go put outside. Keep the table outside. Whenever you want to use the table, you come back, you put the table inside, shift your bed and do it. Even if it means the table is a table you use for your television, you put your TV there. When you want to use do the business, you bring down the TV and sit down on the table and do what you need to do. If you're a part-timer, you don't have a table from where you work, you are not in business. You are still a spare timer. Right? I know some of you will now see that we are revealing who you are right now. If you're a part-time, if your part-time commitment in this business totals two hours a day, for instance, those two hours must be defined. In our case, four hours must be defined. Right? And we've told you exactly what you need to do. One hour prospecting, one hour sell meeting, one hour for prospecting, looking for people, right? One hour for, for, for following up, and one hour for booking people for presentations. These are the things you're going to be doing. And if you do these things daily, you are going to build a formidable business, even if you're a part-timer. Now, the full-timers, are those who, dev who devote their lives, right? Now, the full-timers are those who devote their life to the business, seeing it as a cost they live for. They don't just make money, they make a fortune, and not just in terms of money, but also in terms of impact. We need to understand this, because for those of us who claim we are full-timers, you need to understand the mindset that drives the full-timer. The full-timers are those who develop their who devote their life to this business. They see this business as a cost they live for. They don't just make money, they make a fortune. And it's not just in terms of money, but also in terms of impact. I tell you that for many of us, this business is not just a business. This business is a vocation. This business is a call. This business is something we do because we don't have the option of not doing it. There is no option of not doing it. This business allows us, the full-timers, to reach and touch lives that, that no other person is prepared to reach and touch. This business allows us to go deep into the world, deep down into the world, and transform lives by the activities that we are doing and teaching and duplicating. And by doing this, we create a team and a network of people all over the world who are living the good life just because we said yes to living a good life as full-timers. In this business, we are in a vocation. We are on a vocation. And we're not just, um, we're not just, um, um, you know, we're not just doing network marketing. It's a vocation. It's a call to service. Because when we see the business and we said yes to the business, by saying yes to the business, we start doing this business. We teach people the business. We recruit people. We develop them. We work with them to become leaders. They recruit people. They work with them to become leaders. And we keep on building leadership down the line. Somewhere down your 600 generation, there could be somebody whose children would have gone wayward because the guy is broke. But because you said yes, and because you did the business, and you taught people to do the business down the line, Somewhere down that 600 generation, that person is able to do the business, 
his family is able to live the good life, and these kids are no longer no longer become wayward. These kids now become functional members of society that help build other people. And you, who said yes, six hundred generations above that person becomes responsible for generational wealth. Because you said yes and did the business, you become responsible for generational wealth. But for that person who said no to doing the business, who refused to do the business, and consequently did not create those connections down the lines, 600 generations under him that should have a man, didn't it match, and that man's children becomes wayward, you became responsible for generational poverty. So our business is a call to service. <clears throat> and for those of us who have been connected to this business, it is demanded of you by God to do the business. I say that again. If you are connected to this business and listening to my voice, it is demanded of you by God that you do the business. Because this is a holy business. I want you to go to the chat room and, and type down. Go to the chat room and type it down. It is demanded of me by God that I do the business. It is demanded of me by God that I do the business. It's a demand. Just like God demanded of Jonah to go preach. And Jonah was there running helter skelter until God had to cast him and a, a, a fish swallowed him. And he was vomited on the shores of Nineveh and he had to go preach. That is what is happening to a lot of people here. That's why I see a lot of people go in circles and still come back into network marketing. That's why you see a lot of people who come into network marketing and they leave it, they end up not doing well anywhere. Because they left a system that God has given to them to transform lives. It is demanded of me by God that I do this business. It's a demand. And when you see it as a demand, you will do whatever it takes to get it done because it's a call, it's a vocation. It is a mandate that you must carry. The full-timer creates a duplicable team using residual income because he has all the time to build a team that will lead to residual income. The split-timer does not have the time commitment, nor the part-timer. Not that they have the time commitment because they are not always present. Even though with time commitments, right? The, even, even those with time commitment don't have the luxury of time to give the business what it really takes because of commitment elsewhere. Because people say, okay, you know what, I, 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 will, I will do it, I will do it, I will do it, but guess what? They don't give it all it takes. They don't give it all it takes. As a result, he will experience attrition. That's people quitting the team and finds himself struggling predominantly, living and reliving the vicious cycle of starting over. That is what happens to somebody who is a part-timer and a spare-timer, right? You begin to relieve the vicious cycle of starting over. You are struggling, struggling, struggling. Every time as if you are restarting your business, you are restarting your business. It's because you have the spare time and the part-time mindset. Because when you run it part-time and spare time, you cannot give people the attention they require. Think about it. You have teammates who want to become full-timers, and yet you're a part-timer. And you recruited somebody who's going to be a full timer, and you work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You only have from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. to work with the person, but by that time you're already at home, and probably the person is already at home. <clears throat> How can you create a result? How can you get the person to be who he wants to be? You end up forcing an ego to remain a chicken. And you are reliving this vicious cycle of starting over, 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 and over and over again, which is not good. Right? So you need to understand this fully. You need to understand the, 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 the power of operating as a full timer. So for those of you who are operating as part timers too, you see that your commitment elsewhere hinders your ability to build a team. And that is why many part timers suffer a lot of attrition. Yes. It is stated that full-timers make residual income in this business, yes. But a full-timer should justify his status by his commitments. So you don't say, yes, I'm a full-timer and that is it. It is not in the name. It is by the status of your commitments. What is the level of your commitments? What is the level of your commitments? That is something you want to ask yourself. 
right? Because I want to ask you a question. If a camera, if a hidden camera is put there to monitor your activity every day and monitors you for one month, what will you do? What do you think will, be, will happen? Will your conscience even allow you to even encash the money in your DTC? Will your conscience allow you to do that? Because for some of you, the only reason you are even encashing is because there are people under you who are doing some activity and you're just encashing. As a full timer, you go to your office in the morning with your day planned out and the activities you need to carry out and ensure you undergo the, undergo the penalties if you default. We have what we call the standard methods of operation, right? And we have what we call the daily method of operation. As a full timer, you must understand these things and you must need them. So the first principle of the industrial economy is what? Who can type the first principle of the industrial economy? Go down to the chat room, type the first principle of the industrial economy. What is the first principle of the industrial economy? Type it down for me to see. Right? Type it down for me to see. What is the first principle of the industrial economy? We just discussed it. Type it down. <clears throat> Structure and organization. That is the first principle of the industrial economy. Right? This blueprint is going to take us some time. So we are going to do this blueprint in not just one meeting, right? It's not just one meeting. I will still discuss this blueprint tomorrow. We're going to continue, right? But for now, let's go ahead. The second principle of the industrial economy is it is statistics slash and data driven. It is statistics and data driven. The industrial economy is statistics and data driven. That is the second principle of the industrial economy. We need to understand that very, very well. In the, con in, in the connected economy, we do not take proper stock. We just prospect, we invite, we follow up. And then, you know what? We move to the next. We have this saying in network marketing, some will, some won't, so what? Someone else is waiting somewhere, SW. Some will, some won't, so what? Someone else is waiting somewhere. And you don't talk to people, you just keep throwing them out as trash. That is because you are not keeping proper stock. And this is where a lot of people miss it. In the connected economy, we do not, we do not take proper stock, we just prospect. We invite, we follow up, and we move to the next. We do not re keep record of prospecting numbers in the past days weeks, months, years, etc. How then do you hope to forecast your number variables for the present and the future with reference to the past numbers and conversion percentages from your prospecting, your invitations, and your follow-ups? The same goes for sign-ups, attritions as well. Take a proper look at the world right now. Everything is data-driven. Numbers are everything. Apply them to the connected economy. Observe your numbers. Keep stock of them. Analyze them. Utilize them in your projections and targets with regard to appraisals score, and, and scorecards should be applied. If you don't track your numbers, you cannot grow. You cannot control what you don't track. Jim Rohn said it is a numbers game. If you don't track your numbers in the connected economy, you will not be in business. What that means is that you need to sit down and you need to track your numbers in the connected economy. If you don't do that, you will continue to struggle. You will continue to struggle and you don't want that to happen to you, right? So each of us here need to, as a matter of urgency, track our numbers. The second principle of connected economy is that it is statistics and data-driven. The third principle of the connected economy is, is what? Constant momentum. I have emphasized momentum over and over and over and over again, right? Constant momentum. Because you see, momentum is, the, is called the leader's best friend, right? You see, momentum solves every problem. That's why John Maxwell said that your problem is not your problem. 
The problem is some of you think you have a problem. And you start solving having you start solving a problem which is not a problem and because you are solving a problem which is not a problem the problem which is the problem remains unsolved because right now you're focusing on solving a problem which is not a problem and as you keep solving a problem which is not a problem you have now developed a problem which was not a problem in the first place and because you're now solving a problem which was not a problem in the first place you have not created a new problem for yourself that becomes a very big problem while neglecting the original problem and in the end, what happens? You now have a very big problem to solve whenever, when you never had a problem in the first place. You see, for almost every problem in our business, not almost, for every problem in our business, there's one solution. That one solution is momentum. Momentum is the only problem you have. Momentum is the leader's best friend. Momentum makes leaders better than they are. Momentum makes followers better than they are. Lack of momentum makes leaders worse than they are. Right? Lack of momentum makes followers worse than they are. You see, when you have momentum in your business, every other problem seems to fade away. When you have momentum in your business, you are working the business, you are inviting people, you are talking to people, you are in momentum. You won't cry when two people do not sign up into your business. You won't cry. You are focused on those who are signing up and you're working with those who are signing up. You are in momentum. But when there's no momentum in your business, guess what? Nothing can help you. Bring a train, a very powerful train, right? And then you put a sheet of paper in front of the train. If that train has no momentum, the train is not going to move and nothing is going to happen to that, that piece of paper. But even if you have a six feet steel reinforced wall on the, tra on the track, and that train has momentum coming at 100 kilometers per hour, that train is going to slam right through that concrete wall, break it apart, and continue on its way. Because now the train has momentum. You cannot fight with someone who has momentum. So we tell you that what your business needs is momentum, constant momentum. Momentum is a leader's best friend. And there are two types of momentum. The first one is personal momentum. The second one is group momentum. And I want you to understand that personal momentum precedes group momentum. Before you can have personal momentum, you must have group momentum. Before you can have group momentum, you must have personal momentum. You must be momentum first. Right? You cannot become, neither can you create a millionaire without momentum. And this is where a lot of people miss it. So what is momentum? Momentum is the ability to stay in motion, to accelerate that already achieved and to keep it going. That's momentum. Stay in motion. Business in the connected economy thrives on momentum. Maintaining motion in your business is the gameplay of our trade. For we know that slow and steady does not win the race in this business. The unsteady supply of this reason is the reason a lot of people are not millionaires. They do not maintain the same momentum they started with. They come in hot and you know what? They wax cold almost immediately. You cannot afford to drop, allow a drop in momentum. A mistake that is very costly because in this business, the moment you drop the ball, when you return, you have to start all over again. And that's the thing about momentum. If you have momentum going for you and you leave it, you have to start pushing again. It's like pushing a car, right? If you push a car, start pushing the car, it becomes difficult to push at the beginning. But as you keep pushing, 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 at a point, you find the car going. If you leave it, guess what? The car slows down. I've seen a lot of people in my team who come, and they come in with momentum, and they're hitting it, the thing is going, 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 going. And guess what? They just slow down. I have someone who joined my team during the pandemic, and we worked with this woman, worked with her, worked with her, worked with her hard. Within four months in the pandemic, the woman had made about 10 million naira. Within four months, right after the pandemic stopped, she just dropped momentum, right? She dropped momentum completely, and you know what? Her business started dying off. She dropped momentum, and today, as I speak to you, she has waned. She's no longer doing the business because she dropped momentum. You don't drop momentum. You have to keep on pushing until your system goes on autopilot. And even when it goes on autopilot, you now move into being able to, you know, you, you, from time to time, you pop in, you manage the business, you talk to people, you infuse momentum, and you move. But once a while, you must consistently infuse momentum in your business. 
Whenever somebody tells you they've been in this business for several years and you observe that that person is not yet a millionaire, there's only one diagnosis, no sustained momentum. So you see, when somebody tells you I have been in this business since 2016 and you don't see it in them, you don't, they are not yet millionaires in the business. The only problem is lack of momentum. That's the only problem. You create momentum by having a field calendar for the whole year. Have activities back to back, challenge back to back. That's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why we find out we do the Dubai qualification, we do CCS qualification, we do this challenge, millionaire challenge, we do this, we do that. That is momentum. And people who go from moment challenge to challenge to challenge to challenge are the ones who win in this business eventually. You must have a field calendar. I have gone to some of our offices around Nigeria, and these people do presentations only once a week. How can you run presentations only once a week, only on Sundays? So run presentations only on Saturdays. And you are wondering where your problem is coming from. If you don't do presentations every day in your offices, you are not in business. In fact, if you don't do presentations twice a day, twice a day, you are learning the business. You should be able to do a morning session and an evening session every day. Even if these two people you speak to, you must have that capacity. It's all about momentum, right? So somebody go to the chat room, type the second pillar. What is a second pillar? What is a second pillar? The second principle of the industrial of the connected economy. What is the second principle? It is data driven, right? That is the second principle. So, what is the first pillar of the connected economy? The first pillar of the connected economy is what? A heart of gold, right? A heart of gold. That's the first pillar of the connected economy. What is the second pillar of the connected economy? Industrializing the connected economy. That's the second pillar. Industrializing the connected economy. And under that, we had the principles of the industrial economy. The first principle of the industrial economy was, was structure and organization. The second principle of the industrial economy was what? Statistics and data driven. And then we had the third pillar. The third pillar of the industrial economy, of the connected economy, is what? Constant momentum, constant momentum, right? And we have exhaustively discussed constant momentum, right? And now that brings us to the fourth pillar of the connected economy, the fourth pillar of the connected economy, right? And the fourth pillar of the connected economy, we are going to continue that discussion tomorrow, right? So I will discuss the fourth pillar tomorrow and we'll see how far we can go, right? So gentlemen and ladies, you have been going through the um, 2021 blueprint, right? Because this blueprint is still very, very effective for us in the team today, right? I want to urge you, I want to urge you, leave the tenets of the blueprint. Whatever it is we're telling you here, leave it. Begin to leave it, and you're going to develop, and going to build a very powerful team this year. Remember, if you're not in business, you're not in business. Are you a part-timer? Are you a full-timer? Oh yeah, but our spare time, man. The choice is yours. Thank you so much, guys. I will come back tomorrow and I will continue to discuss this blueprint. Until I'm done with it, I will anchor the summer meetings. God bless you all.